Say it now before the cleansing begins, says the tank, tank marine, tank marine, says the tech marine of tank red, tank marine. And he, oh, no, not this again. Can't do this jungle, so I can't zoom out. So yeah, he's going to be facing off against the warlock of Dingus Khan. And what opinion Dingus Khan has on Genghis Khan? Oh, you know, Jingus Khan. I wonder. Create destruction there to open the game. Glad we could witness that. <laughs> you gotta wait a little bit longer after you fleet footed before you throw out the destructor. You're not gonna do any damage. Attack straight to the mid. Yeah, techie and scouts down here. Quite aggressive cap in here from the guardians, but they got the support of the gar garrison if they need to take it. Warlock found himself in a bit of a tricky spot here, encountering the tax now as well. Pincered between two threats, Tech Marine rotating over. Yeah, this Warlock's not going to be around for too long. Not sure why the scouts are forcing melee. And he misses another Destructor. Dingus. Bro. Might be time to play against the AI and just practice that Destructor a little bit. This is not a good engagement for these ladies. They're going to get melted. The shotguns come out too, absolutely unnecessary. 100% did not need no shotguns. But hey, Tank Red can keep the pressure on. Dingus is going for Rangers first. Why is he going for Rangers first? I guess he's experimenting. Why would you go for Rangers first? That's really weird. I guess he's a uh, Tank Red's like a worse player than him and he's experimenting. I don't know what's going on here. This is. Yeah, I guess he's like limit testing these rangers. There's been a lot of talk about these rangers recently. But you're not meant to just walk them into tactical marines. What the fuck? That is not the purpose of them. The tacks can just turn around and shoot these guys. They've got like no HP. Just punch them. Tax, what are you doing? God, this is weird. Yeah, and this is a lot of attrition and bleed here for sure for the other army. I mean, he should have had a shuriken set up right here and then this whole thing would have been shut down and none of no need for this absolutely exorbitant amount of bleed and the one good thing for dingus is that his guardians over here have managed to catch this entire east side of the map and scouts with no upgrades really can't contest default guardians so he's in a good spot over there we're not going for any long rifles yet so it's just pew pewing, but Rangers aren't meant to be walking forward doing this. Yeah, they're just gonna get melted. Kill surprise. They're meant to be behind your melee units advancing afterwards or finding very squishy ranged units. Like a scout squad that you can melee, but of course when the scout squad's got a equipped with shotguns and has a sergeant to detect you, that's a terrible idea. Just you just wouldn't do that. Okay, so that firefight's going to continue. The Guardians will win that firefight. Well, it's doing a good job here of tanking. Gets out, but facilitates as she's getting in. Will we see a nade spike? No, oh, we're just going to see the safe shotgun blast. You could have done a nade spike into a um, into the, the high power shot there to suppress them. That would be pretty brutal. The Banshees can't beat the tax there. But the tax retreat anyway. I mean, in theory, they could if they got lucky with specials, but... Risky. Oh shit, the Guardian has wiped Tank Red's scouts here. He was trying to cap the... Sorry, not cap. He was trying to repair the generator. And therefore they left cover. Hmm. Can he get a grenade here on the Guardians is the question. Surely Dingus would spot it. You would think Dingus would spot it. Oh, he just throws it like that. It seemed like the scouts were winning the firefight. He should have saved it for the retreat. 
He could have wiped them. Oh man. Our boy Tank Red had such a good initial opening, but he is throwing hard right now. God, how is this even a replay? Check out the rosters. Only just replacing the scouts now. Tank Red is building Devastators, but Dingus has ranges. He can get long rifles on them. That's going to be a pretty hard counter to the Devastators. And... Yeah, Dingus already has five units out. I just... I don't... I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure how this game even goes on. Look at the map control. Absolutely dominant map control here from Dingus. Nice use of the high-powered shot here from the Tech Marine and his mass-crafted Bolter, though. Killing a lot of these Banshees every engagement. And there's another near spike. Ooh, and it wipes the Banshees with the pew, pew afterwards. Yes, it does. Yep. Honestly, I don't know why the Banshees were pushing that deep anyway. Kind of ridiculous to be pushing that deep. Okay, well, there you go. Game normalized a bit now. Tank Red is already ahead in VPs, too. He's definitely behind in tech. Dingus is missing a gen. He's forgot to build one. Should have had that built a long time ago. I wonder how much that's delaying his tech. His tech, yeah, probably quite a lot. I mean, right now he's floating anyway. And he's got the resources now to build the other gen. It's clearly not realized. Hey, he hit a destructor. Isn't that beautiful? These guys have got elite training though, right? Yeah, they're regening pretty damn fast. Are they? No, maybe they're not. Yeah, they do have elite training, fair enough. Luki special there on the warlock. If they didn't retreat, it would have knocked them over and he'd have been able to stop the decap anyway. Here we go, Rangers in completely the wrong position. So unable to detect the scouts there who were able to dispatch the shurikens with a pair of grenades. That's why you need battle equipment. But he doesn't have the doesn't have battle equipment on his guardians. Immediately high powered shot claiming another guardian life. Dingus is so far ahead in tech, it is unbelievable. Like, it feels like a Falcon right now would just win the game. What's he waiting for exactly? Let's see. So, he doesn't quite have the power yet for the Falcon. Now he does, right? Night power? Or is it 95? Maybe he's waiting for a Wraith Lord. Okay, I don't know what. I don't know what a Wraith Lord costs right now. Is it 100 power or is it 110? Dingus hasn't built. And now he's realized, oh my god, what am I doing? My power comes so slow. Because he doesn't have a third gen. And he is going for the 110 power Wraith Lord. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, it's not quite as good with the gen bashing thing, because it's slower to get over to the gen farm, it gen bashes slower. Oh, wow. Grenade getting extremely close to wiping that shuriken squad there. Where is the Wraith Lord? Because he's struggling right now against these scouts. I think he needs... I think he needs Warp Spiders after this uh, Wraith Lord. To be able to deal with the uh, scouts. Because these scouts are being brutal to him. Look at the Rangers, man. Holy shit, 13 HP. But Tank Red's going tier 2. 
Is the Wraith Lord gonna risk going straight to the gen farm? I mean, it's so risky. I don't think I would. You don't know where your opponent is in tech. You know he's got a Devastator, so at any second, a Laz Cannon could just pop up. It's pretty risky. The Wraith Lord's slow as fuck at gen bashing. If you could get the mounted Shuriken on it and then put it in range stance, it wouldn't be as heavy of a commitment. And it, I, think, I think it might even bash faster with that thing in range stance than it does in melee. Yeah, finally we're getting the Pathfinder gear here. This is not a matchup to be using Pistol Rangers. The only time you'd use them, Pistol Rangers against SM, is if they get ASM. Then you keep them behind your Banshees and it helps your Banshees beat the ASM by debuffing their damage resistance. But that is right there where you like the Long Rifles with the Kinetic Pulse. The Long Rifles also can deal with the last cannon that's now sitting in the back. God, that was a long range shit on the Rift Lord. I should have started winding up and then it walks out of the, the area. Wallock just went down. God, that doesn't feel like it was super necessary. Autak, what are you doing? Oh, the Autak totally could have wiped the Devastator there, but she didn't go for it. She has Fleet of Foot. The debuff wouldn't have mattered. Look how little elf it has, 52. There's no way she would not have got two attacks off there in melee. Right now, she's flinging the Tech Marine around. Tech Marine caught the Wraith Lord there with an Orbs of the Omnicide. Wow, this is such heavy commitment of AV. We've got the Missile Launch Attacks too. Melter Gun onto the Tech Marine in addition to the Orbs of Omnicide, but you've got to be careful with the Autark. You're not going to kill the Tech Marine there. The Autark skin is super low, man. Don't lose her. Don't lose her. Well, I mean, that was an alternative instead of going for the Wart Spiders, that's for sure. I don't think the Autark is a terrible idea here, actually. Losing the Warlock is, is kind of shit, though. That much has to be said. Rangers vacating the scene to try and do a bit of capping, and that is going to leave the Shuriken vulnerable to their scouts. Now he's going for Warp Spiders too. Damn, Dingus is... What? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's kind of hitting the Ranger and just destroying that guy. That's kind of said no. Not today. Yeah, the size of Dingus's army is really quite intimidating right now. I wonder what Tank Red is, is planning here. Is he planning on getting a Dreadnought? Yeah. Wow. Alright. Well, let's see. I mean, he's got a lot of AV. So certainly, Dingus will not want to take any sort of Wraith Lord Dreadnought duel with the amount of AV support that Tank Red has in the Orbs of the Omnicide, the Melter Gun, and the Missile Attacks. And the Last Cannon Devastator. But the last kind of Devastator shouldn't be too much of a threat when you've got the range of long rifles to poke at it from afar, kinetic pulse to knock it over, and then you've got the Autark to jump on top of it too. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. I don't know why we're not seeing any shoulder mounted upgrades on the Wraith Lord either. I would have got the Shuriken variant a long time ago. Maybe he just felt like it's likely there's going to be a bit coming soon, but... I don't know. It's not. It's been a while, hasn't it? Rangers should probably focus on the Tech Marine here, get rid of him. He's got less regen. And Rangers not being fully reinforced isn't great either. And they're doing 66% 6 of the damage that they should. Spiders in the corner, east side gonna be capping. But here comes the Dreadnought. So it's gonna take a bit of time for Eldar to switch their loadouts to anti-vehicle. You see one Bright Lance coming up. Yeah, then one stays Shuriken, and you've got the Bright Lance on the Wraith Lord now. Yeah, so Dingus must have been predicting a vehicle coming out, which is why he kept it basic. So both sides got a decent amount of AV here. You've of course got the potential for a Haywire Grenade from the Spiders. I must admit, it doesn't really feel like the Warlock has done anything this game. 
think Dingus would have been much better off playing as the Watts by Rexar. Mines getting dropped by the Tech Marine here. Interesting. I mean, they will not do too much damage to Rift Lords, but they will snare it, which is quite important. Wait, did he get a third Shuriken? Or did he cancel the Bright Lands? Cancelled the Bright Lands? Why? That's really weird. And I don't know what to think about that. Why would you cancel the Bright Lands? Huh. Interesting choice. Unless there's a Bright Lance in a web we're getting, that's the third shuriken. Yeah, a little bit of chip there with a hairway grenade and a teleport out. I like that Dingus is dropping down some web we gates, that's cool. No, it's definitely no with a third shuriken. Hmm. Tank Red didn't see that. That web we gates, that's good for him. Okay, Autark is going to lead the way in this engagement, tie up the Devastators. She's getting a fair bit of focus fire. Another tactical marine squad's been spawned here out of the drop pod. Needed the Dreadnought in better position here to defend the melee units, but Autark's getting real low. If the Dreadnought gets into melee with it, she might be dead. Missile attack still in play. Where's the support? To, where's the spiders to kill these scouts? Quick time, come on spiders, get in the action. That's what you're there for. Not Brightlands though, so the Dreadnought can just walk in and chop up the shurikens. What the heck? Big micro mistakes here from Dingus. Rangers not in the correct position to deter these scouts and detect them earlier. Spiders in the totally incorrect position. Not outputting their DPS against the scouts whilst the enemy army was suppressed. Now the spiders are getting yeeted by the shotgun blast, taking loads of damage from double attacks, which have extra damage thanks to the inspiration. And the dreadnought turns around and kills one of the watt spiders as well. Watt spiders lose four of their models, including their exarch. Good amount of damage inflicted onto the rear flood. Now the autax going back in, but she's on her own. Yeah, she needs to reconsider that. She'll get absolutely melted by these forces. I'm so confused as to why there is not a bright lance. How on earth could you expect a Wraith Lord alone to deal with a Dreadnought when there's this much anti-vehicle support on the enemy side? I mean, look at this right here. A Dreadnought, a Missile Launcher, a Melter Gun, and Orbs of the Omnissiah, if you go too deep on the on the uh, Wraith Lord, and the Last Cannon. Also, if the Last Cannon snares you, then it's going to be really hard to dodge the the Melter, uh, the, the Orbs of the Omnissiah. The Autark keeps chasing these scouts. That's not her job. She is not good at this. The Warp Spiders need to be the one hunting the scouts. They will tear them to pieces with their really high piercing DPS. The Autark needs to be staying in the middle near the Rangers, Shuriken, Bright Lance, giving them range damage resistance and then jumping in at crucial times to disrupt those range units, including the last cannon devastators. Brightland's setting up way too close here. It needs to be behind. It's got extra range compared to a shuriken. Too vulnerable up front like that. It's just going to get forced off the field. The Guardian's been mismicroed and sent in way too deep. Probably going to be a wipe of the shuriken here from another swing of that dreadnought fist. Pop! There you go. Now all the space marine units are doing more damage, including the missile launcher. Oh, and he catches the ray flood with the orbs of the Omnissiah. Unwinnable matchup, Dingus says. <laughs> Unwinnable matchup. Definitely not unwinnable. You had your units AFK in, in every important engagement and had the units that you were using fighting the wrong things. Why was the Autark over there? Where were the spiders in this entire thing? They were capping the VP. Your absolutely most important unit in your entire roster. It stops the Dreadnought from attacking for four seconds. It snares the Dreadnought and does a little bit of spike damage. But most importantly, it is your by far highest source of piercing DPS, which would melt those scouts, which are proving to be such a pain in the ass. And with the scouts out of the way, the Autark, potentially with the force shield on her, her bubble, would be able to tie up the attacks for a very long period of time, not to mention the Warlock has been down the entire time. Imagine a Warlock with the Cloak of Shadows and distort field on him he's basically immune to range damage and all the guys around him are taking significantly less range damage they're going to be able to tie up the tax for a very long period of time you can warp throw 
their tactical marines around you can warp through the missile attacks into the arc of fire of the shuriken and then when they commit you've got rangers guardians and warp spiders to kill the scouts that try to save them and you've got a bright lance behind the shuriken so if the dreadnought comes forward it's screwed and then you route all their infantry because the autak then leaps in forces off the lazcan and devastator and then when the dreadnought tries to flee it can't because the warp spiders teleport in hit it with a haywire grenade snaring it and then you advance with your wraith lord who has a wrist mounted bright lance and so can kill the dreadnought that's walking away this is not an impossible matchup young man you need to improve your performance See, once again, we've got the wrong assets fighting the wrong thing. The Watt Spiders should not be shooting Sterngard here. They're outnumbered, they're on the wrong side of cover, fighting their hard counter in the Hellfire around Sterngard. Not good. Dingus is tier 3. Good fire prism usage could win him this game. It's a good map for the fire prism. You've got rangers, so there's no excuse to get hit by the last cannon because you can have the rangers spot for you. You've got all the tools you need here for a fire prism to dominate even an enemy predator. predator because you've got the rangers, you use them in front of the fire prism at all time whilst infiltrated, not even shooting just for the line of sight so you know when the predator is advancing so you can get your fire prism well out of there and then you can set up a situation where the bright lance covers it at all times so that the predator can't just bum rush your fire prism furthermore you have warp spiders which you can teleport in and hear why the predator pinning it in place stopping it being able to fire and then basically making it food to be killed by your prism so the best bet actually here for tank red might be some Range Terminators with the Cyclone Missile Launcher. But we'll see, right now Tank Red's actually bleeding a lot of resources, he's losing a lot of models, so he's actually struggling to have the re requisition available to purchase something like the Terminators. Meanwhile, we can have the Guardians and the Autark going down the flanks, harassing the Scouts, they should be able to do okay. I mean, the Autark will do okay versus one Scout squad, and so will a fully upgraded Guardian squad. I mean, the fully upgraded Guardian squad will quite easily beat one fully upgraded Scout squad. So, I, you know, I definitely think Dingus definitely has all the tools available that he needs in order to counter a, a tier 3 here from Tank Red. Like I say, ranged Terminators will be difficult to deal with. If he plays properly, a Predator should be very easy to counter right now with what he has. Ranged Terminators are tougher because he mostly only has ranged uh, piercing which is very, very weak against the super heavy infantry armor of Terminators. But Terminators are immobile, so, you know, maybe you can delay right around the map and get some Seer Council, which could deal with those Terminators. This is optimistic positioning of the Bright Lance. The Bright Lance needs to be used defensively now to protect from a bomb rush onto the Fire Prism. Um, by tactical marines, by the dreadnought, by a predator. I mean, it's not going to help against the tactical marines, but what what it facilitates, if it's there, is it facilitates the fire prism going into the disperse shot to control the attacks, whilst the bright lance itself deters the enemy dreadnought from just walking down and forcing melee onto your fire prism. There's a lot of repair spot here, which is very awkward to deal with. For, for Dingus. Normally I'd say that you just want to keep chipping at the Dreadnought and by incurring that HP damage you're actually buying time by forcing all these units, their repairing units to be repairing and not capping the map but when you've got a Tech Marine and Double Scouts and potentially Blessings of the Omnicide which really ought to be coming out from Tank Bridge given the amount of resources he has available it's not really much of a, much of a bleed. See I, I would like to see an Orbital Bombardment coming out of Tank Red pretty soon see what happens here. So you got to run the level 1. Oh, so the water spiders are on the wrong side of cover to hurt the stone guard here. Stone guard proving to be the chads that they always are in this matchup. They're a nightmare. They really are a nightmare. They're so hard to kill. 
You gotta suppress them. Or get your hero into melee with them. Neither of which Dingus has access to at the moment. Dingus... Ding honestly, Dingus' Warlock didn't do anything all this game. He might as well have been playing without a hero for most of the game. Even in the tier 1 that he was up, they, he didn't. They, they didn't... He lost the prism! Oh, for fuck's sake! How did he lose the prism? How? You've got rangers to see the threat coming from a mile away. There's no ASM, so there's no snare other than the LAS cannon. But the LAS cannon has less sight than it has range. So you can just knock it over with your prism from max range and the LAS cannon can't even see you. Well, obviously, obviously Dingus has lost now. This is hopeless. Seer Council is going to get wrecked by all this. Ugh. I don't know how he lost the fire prism to a missile launch attack and a melter dreadnought. The melter dreadnought has like 30 range. The prism has 65. And again, I'd get it if you didn't have ranges because of course the prism's sight range is not 65 and its weapon range is, but there's no excuse. You must always have such good vision because the rangers have superior vision and they can infiltrate so that they can walk forward and be ahead of your line without being threatened. That's a massive part of the value of the unit to the Eldar roster. Clearly not used correct in this instance. And here come the Seer Council, level 1 charging headfirst into Terminators, which, look, they don't have melee resist, but they're still extremely tanky. They've got a lot of support here. They're performing admirably, to be honest. Oh, they've got Distort Field on them, protecting them from range damage. 50% damage resistance, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, they kill a Terminator. Now they're going to force off the Tech Marine. The Dreadnought was in the wrong position there for, the, for a Tank Red. Fortunately, the, the Bright Lance there was on Scorch Beam, so it didn't actually do a lot of damage to the Dreadnought. A misplay from Tank Red here, running the scouts into base. Is that intentional or not? No, it's not intentional. Whoops. Hey, to be fair, Tank Red, that's like your first loss all game. <laughs> uh, it is harder to lose units as Space Marines and other factions, but still. With the exception of the Sentinel and Chimera, IG units are very, very, very hard to lose because they're so tanky. so much HP, even if the HP per model isn't very high. Um, but then, yeah, it's probably Space Marines. What's the play, Dingus? What's the play? Okay. He's, uh... I don't know why he just revealed that he's here like this. The enemy is capturing one of our Okay, this is a bad position for the Terminators, going in isolated here with the Seers fleeting in. No distort field on the Seers this time. You can see they're taking a lot of range damage. Oh wow, there's a turret in mid too. Oh, I don't think this is great. All Tank Red needs to do here is just rotate his range units from here to here to here to here to here. And then keep sending scouts down to the natural VP. This should be pretty easy for him. Dingus needs another prism. I don't know how he lost the prism, man. It's kind of tilting me. Like, it was the perfect counter. The only thing it can't do is it can't really kill the Terminators. It takes too long. The Terminators can't really kill it either. That's the beautiful thing about it. Okay, Haywire into an Eldritch Storm. That is his coup de gras. And what a coup de gras it is. Wipes out the Stern Guard. Pins in place the Dreadnought, but there is an Obelisk Bombardment lifting up the Bright Lance here. All three fucking beams. That is a dead Bright Lance. Okay, so the Dreadnought lives. Blessing of the Omnisari is activated, so it is getting healed right now, and it just popped something. What the fuck did it pop? It popped a... Warp Spider, maybe? I don't know. There's no real AV. Oh, we've got a Fusion Gun Autark. Okay. She's currently running into melee, though, so the Dreadnought could just turn around and slap that bitch away. Uh, Dreadnought? And there is a haywire grenade. Autak, you need to jump. Ooh, jumps behind the turret. That's a very ballsy play, madame. I would not have done that. Uh, shoot the dreadnought? No? 
I would have jumped down this way, but okay. Tech Marine is now here. God, this is a hectic ending. Gonna be punching the auto. Currently is a 2 to 1 cap against Dingus, but he's got his natural being capped by the Seer Capsule right now. Yeah, the problem is, it's too many VPs for him to hold. He's basically gone all in here just to try and get this situation. You see, he's building Fire Dragons in Tier 3 instead of a Prism to deal with a Melted Dread. I mean, Dingus, mate, listen. Listen, you need to go back to the drawing board, buddy. Melter, Dreadnought, is like the counter to Fire Dragons. Prism is a hard counter to the Melter Dreadnought. How on earth you lost the Prism? I don't know. There's just no excuse. I'm sorry, you want to be an Eldar player? You gotta step up your game, my guy. Not all races are as easy to play as one another. I'll give you that. Eldar are harder to play than Space Marines. But it doesn't mean there's a balance thing going on here. It's a skill floor and a skill ceiling thing. You gotta crawl out of that floor, my guy. You gotta crawl out of the floor, okay? Because you're struggling to stand on top of it right now. Tank Red's gonna claim it, folks. Tech Marine versus Warlock. Hey, listen. I got you a little bit of Warlock gameplay. I hope you appreciate that. Eldar replays are hard to come by these days. But thank you very much for tuning in. If you want more high-level replays, check out the Patreon. You'll be supporting the channel and the community by helping me out over there. Otherwise, if you can't afford it, you don't want to, for whatever reason, just drop a comment and like the video because that will boost us in the algorithm and more people will get to witness the glory that is Dawn of War 2. Thank you for tuning in, folks. That's going to be all from me today. Torpid is signing out.